Good morning, everyone. This is Saloni Tomar, Assistant Professor, IMT College of Law, Greater Noida. Today, we are going to discuss on the topic legal personality. This topic is from the subject jurisprudence. Uh, we shall begin by quoting some definitions of uh, the major jurists that we have read in jurisprudence. And the number one is Salmond. Basically, uh, what is legal personality has been uh, ex extremely uh, critical concept, which has been in defined by Salman in very simple words. He stated that a person is any being whom the law regards as capable of rights and bound by certain legal duties. So in very general common parlance, a person is any entity who is uh, given some rights and is uh, bound by some legal duties, which he needs to uh, fulfill during his lifetime. Coming next, uh, it's Seveni. Seveni belongs to the historical school of jurisprudence. And he somehow uh, gave the definition similar to that of Salman. But he uh, narrowed down, down the definition that a person is the subject or bearer of a right. He did not discuss anything related to legal duty. Simultaneously, uh, then came the Austin. And he uh, termed person as physical or natural person including every being which can be deemed which can be deemed as human so according to austin anything which is similar that of a human shall be quoted as a person um, and not necessarily any other entity which uh, shall include and which includes river or any water body or animal coming to the contemporary law which we have in india uh, section 11 of the Indian Penal Code, it states the person includes any company or association or body of persons, whether incorporated or not. So current, uh, as per the current trend, a person not only includes humans or animals or any other entity, but also includes a company, which is an artificial formulation or association or body of persons, whether incorporated or not. This shall be discussed later on in this lecture. Coming next is the kind of the person. In under the Indian law and under the uh, jurisprudence of law, there are two kinds of person. Number one, natural person. Second, legal person or artificial person. Natural persons. A natural person is a human being possessing natural personality. According to Holland, a natural person is a human being as is regarded by the law as capable of rights and duties. Natural person is a simple definition, which is that of given by the Salmon and Seveni. Next come the legal persons. They, uh, the uh, legal persons is a newer concept, which is formulated for the ease of doing business. So legal person is also known as juristic uh, person or fictitious or artificial person. Uh, what has been explained in this PPT is a legal person has a real existence, but its personality is fictitious. A fictitious thing is that which does not exist in fact, but is deemed to exist in the eye of law. For example, company or corporation or any idol. Uh, so any uh, idol, which we commonly called as murti in temple, is not a person, is not a human, but a legal entity is given to such idol. Similar goes with the uh, incorporation of a company. A company generally comprises of its members, uh, directors, managing directors, executive directors, all these entities. But company in itself is not a human, but a legal color is given to the company by the legal person's concept. Here we shall discuss few entities which are not humans, which are not into existence, but a legal color is given to such entities. For example, unborn persons, for example, animals, uh, natural uh, or environmental bodies like water bodies, plants, mountains, dead persons. So number one, we shall discuss legal status of unborn person. A child who is still in the womb of a mother is considered not technically a legal person. But by legal fiction, the fetus gets some legal rights and the society has certain duty to perform towards such unborn. So technically, an uh, unborn person is not a living entity. Till the time he comes uh, out of uh, the mother's womb, such entity is not considered as human. But there are certain laws in India which advocate an unborn child as a person and grant him certain rights, some of which are discussed uh, now. Section 112 to 116 of the Indian Penal Code, which deals with the abortion, which deals with the uh, unwanted pregnancy, which deals with the 
मिसकैरेज लार्जली अंडर दी मेडिकल टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी एक्ट लेस डाउन दैट वेरियस लॉज एंड प्रोसीजर टू बी फॉलोड इन ऑर्डर टू गेट अ चाइल्ड अवॉर्डेड सो बाय दी uh by these laws it has been di- directly stated that few legal rights are given to an entity which is not born which is not into existence and uh, ex- uh, largely section 112 to 316 explains this concept next is legal status of a minor minors are legal subjects and their position in a legal and social society should be at the heart of a legal system their key characteristics is that they are unable to perform legal connections on their own authority a uh, legal uh, person as a minor a minor is someone who has not attained the age of 18 in india so a minor is not given any right he he has not been uh, provided with the right to vote similarly on this context a minor is not allowed to get into a contract with any other third person because he because a uh, Uh, the main mentality uh, behind this uh, criteria is that a minor cannot be termed as someone who is capable of having a mature mind uh, this is due to their lack of total capacity as they enter essential uh, legal relationship to their parents or someone who may replace their place minor is not so mature that he can get into contract or commit any offense so in contract a minor is exempted and even if he gets into a contract he shall be he he shall not be responsible for such uh, liabilities similarly under ipc a minor is exempted from any offence if he uh, if he being the age of 7 or below commits any offence but simultaneously if a person if a child ages from 7 to 12 he shall be Uh, uh, liable for any offence based on his maturity and reasonable understanding. Next is the legal status of lo- uh, lunatic and drunken person. Lunatic is a person who is not sane, who is not having a mental capacity that of other normal human beings, and a drunken person is someone who, for a time being, under the intoxication, is not able to have uh, the power of any decision making. so the status of lunatic and drunken person have some special special position they are natural persons and have legal entity if at the time of entering into a contract a lunatic or drunken person is incapable of understanding the nature of a contract then they are considered to be incapable of entering into a contract uh, under indian law the term lunatic comprises of two or three more uh, terminologies number one that is a uh, 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 idiotic a idiotic is a person who is idiot for a very long term who is insane who is not able to comprise of a mental ability for a very long time but lunatic is a person who is a uh, uh, insane for a very short time and he gets normal for a time being and he another he goes insane for another time being such diseases schizophrenia under under the effect of schizophrenia a person is sometimes able to take decisions of his own but for the other time uh, duration he is not so competent to take any decision so similarly such person are not given the right to contract when they are insane when they are not in the position of decision making then comes the legal status of dead person dead persons have no legal personality and hence cannot sue and be sued dead men are no longer persons in the eye of law legal personality of a person dies with his personality so uh, again why this dead person is given the legal color because for the sake of a uh, protection of his reputation uh, legal persons do not remain the owners of their property until their successors entered upon their inheritance when a person dies leaving his will his property is distributed according to his will law recognizes and takes into account the after the death of the person of his desires and interests when alive there are three things in respect of which the anxieties of living men extend even after his death the number one is his body his reputation and his property even a person dies there is some there always remain a concern regarding his body and largely of his reputation and secondly of his property coming to number one his body a living person is interested in the treatment to be given to his body 
a person is interested in a decent funeral and good burial. Criminal law secures a decent burial for all the dead persons and the violation of a grave is a criminal offense. So recently there have been crimes such as uh, rape has been committed to the dead body. The uh, the courts, uh, the Indian courts have taken uh, commission of such crimes and under IPC doing such act has been termed as offense. Though such person is dead, though such person is not a legal entity in the eye of law, but for the sake of his reputation, but the sake of his afterlife, but, the, but for the sake of his relatives, he needs to have a decent cremation, a good burial, and a, a preservation of his entity. Next comes his uh, reputation. Everyone is interested in maintaining reputation even after death. The reputation of a dead person receives some degree of protection from the criminal law. Defamation suit can be filed for loss of reputation of a dead person. If the publication is an attack on the interest of a living person as a matter of fact, this right is in reality not that for the dead person but for his living descendants. Uh, it's a very general concept that why a person would like to secure his reputation even after his death. So the protection of the reputation of any person after his death is preserved mainly for the reputation of the living descendants that has been left after his death for his relatives or his family members. So defamation suit can be filed for a person uh, on the behalf of the person who has been attacked or who has been maligned because of his any act or any violation of his right of privacy. Next comes his property and estate. A person is dead, because, uh, but his hand may continue to regulate and determine the enjoyment of the property he owned while he was alive. So in the very leading case of William versus William, 33 Bombay, 122, in this case, the court held that a person during his lifetime cannot make a will, disposing of his body, example, giving his brain, bones, or any organ of his body to the museum or giving any part of his body to the medical college. But the trend, but recently we have observed that it has been a very good deed to donate your organs to any organization, be it hospital or be it any other institution. So the trend has been changed and it is legal to donate one's eye or part of his body after his death and it's a good deed. So this case is not very applicable in the contemporary times, but um, this has been cited by many books. Next comes the legal status of animals. The law does not recognize beast or lower animals as person because they are merely things and have no natural legal right. We generally assume that animals have no rights because they do not have duties simultaneously. And if we refer to the definition given by the Salman, he, regard, he regarded them as mere objects of legal rights and duties, but never the subject of them. He presumed that animals must animals are not entitled to have any right because they are not humans. Salman gave a very narrow definition that was very different from Seveny or Austin. So animals are not capable of having rights and duties, hence they are not animals according to Salman and various other jurists. But in the case of Animal Welfare Board of India versus A. Nagraj, 1949, Honorable Supreme Court observed that Article 21 of the Constitution of India safeguards the rights of all the humans and protect their lives. The definition of the word life is expanded and explained and it included all forms of life including animal lives and all the animals have honor or dig uh, dignity. So similarly, this has been a very uh, pragmatic approach that has been taken by the Honorable Supreme Court of India and, it, uh, and the court observed that Article 21 with its expanding power have that jurisdiction to designate animals as humans too. The definition of the life is expanded and even if we see the contemporary times, the life includes the privacy too. So simultaneously with time, Article 21 is expanded and with this leading case of Animal Welfare Board of India of 1949, this has been recognized and animals are liable, animals are, are to be recognized similarly as that of humans and they have similar rights. Then a very uh, important concept comes that is the legal status of idol. It has been judicially held that idol is a juristic person and as such it can hold property. Its position is however like that of a minor 
and the priest that is the pujari which we call in the legal parlance in the general parlance act as a guardian to look after its interest honorable supreme court in yogendra nath naskar was a commissioner of income tax 1969 wherein it was held that an idol is a juristic person capable of holding property and of being taxed through shibayat shibayat is a person who manages the property of the temple if we see the legal term goji shibayat is a term that is used for the management interested with the possession and management of its property an idol can be treated as a unit of assessment for assessing its liability under the income tax act so in this case of 1969 the uh, honorable supreme court co uh, stated that idol is a juristic person though idol is not a juristic person a murti cannot have a human form despite of this fact idol is a juristic person and it can hold property it can sue for the property it can dispose of the property and all these things will be done by a shibayat shibayat who manages the property of the temple similarly like in the case of the legal status of minor wherein the guardian or the parents of the minor were held responsible for the management of anything that the minor does or is held liable for the acts of the minor similarly in the case of idol or murti in the temple the shibayat is interested with such responsibilities and to the very uh, fact of this idol is considered as a minor person under indian law idol being it anyone being it murti of any god or goddess a minor is a, a, a idol is a minor person and that's why a shibayat in the form of a guardian is appointed for the management of the property again simultaneously with this the legal concept of mosque is also a very critical issue and there has have been numerous cases which have designated mosque as a juristic person and there has been another cases which have not designated mosque as a juristic person regarding the legal personality for mosque the courts have expressed conflicting views in the case of mola bucks versus hafizuddin that is a case of 1925 a very old case it might happen the courts have not taken a very pragmatic approach the high court of the of lahore held that a mosque was a juristic person capable of being sued but with the passage of time in 1940 in the leading case of masjid shahid ganj versus shiromani gurudwara prabandhak committee the privy council held a contrary view and held that mosques are not artificial persons in the eye of law and therefore no suit can be brought by or against them the privy council however left the question open whether for any purpose a mosque can be regarded as a juristic person or not this has been uh, this case has been a very uh, leading case in the history of uh, uh, the cases in the in india because this case designated mosque as not a artificial person so on the other hand where the idol or the temple has been given the color of legal person mosque or masjid have not been given the color of art uh, of legal person they are not artificial person a very simple common logic behind this um, designation is that uh, muslims or the mohammedan mohammedan community do not uh, worship any idol they do not do idol worshiping hence uh, any entities there is no entity in their uh, uh, praying premises that they offer prayers to so they are not given the masjid is not given any artificial personality color in the eye of law next comes the corporate personality concept despite of the fact that we we have given legal personality color to various entities such as minor unborn child um temple idol mosque dead person animals there has been a very near concept which is formulated by the institutions for the ease of doing business and simultaneously supreme court and the other courts of india have recognized this concept and given due respect to this concept so legal personality is an artificial creation of law entities under the law are capable of being parties to a legal relationship a natural person is a human being and legal persons are artificial persons such as corporation law creates such corporation and gives certain legal rights and duties of a human being the very uh, the very example of this concept is incorporation of a company a company is not a human a company is a is just a mere legal entity which has been given legal personality or corporate personality color 
by the act that is the companies act of 2013 and simultaneously with this the company has been given certain rights and duties of its own which it needs to be it it, it needs to be bound by such rights and duties a legal person is what provides a person or organization rights and responsibilities by the law these days the concept of legal personality is frequently a part of discussion because the rights or legal responsibility of the entity such as corporations that cannot be defined by a single person so under the corporations there are numerous person and even if any one person leaves there will be no impact or no effect on the existing members and the incorporation of a company the basic difference between a company and the firm is this only that if in the case of company any member leaves there will be a modification in the memorandum of association of article or, or or articles of association but a company shall remain the same on the other hand in the case of the firm if all the partners leave or if all the partners went insolvent the the firm will dissolve the firm cannot continue under such case also a firm cannot be registered of a uh, uh, whereas in the case of a company a company can be easily registered under the uh, companies act of 2013 now we will discuss the theories related to corporate personality number 1 is fiction theory this theory says that a personality of a corporation is different from that of its members fiction theory regards that a company is very different from the members even if the members leave the company shall continue at any cost and the removal of the members will not create any effect on the company so it's a very fictitious or the fiction fictional thing that has been incorporated that any change in the membership will not affect the existence of the corporation second theory comes the concession theory it is concerned with the sovereignty of the state it presupposes that the corporation as a legal person has great importance because it is recognized by the state or the law according to it a juristic person is merely a concession of the creation of the state so basically under the concession theory it has been stated that if any legal or corporate personality color is given to any institution it is at the mercy of the state if the state desires to give such color to any entity it shall be considered as a corporate personality otherwise only humans will be considered as a personality and no other entity or institution shall be regarded the same third comes the group personality theory this theory believes that every collective group has a real mind a real will and a real power of action so a corporation has a real existence irrespective of the fact whether it is recognized by the state or not fourth comes the bracket theory or the symbolist theory it states that the con conception of a com uh, corporate personality is important and is an economic device by which we can simplify the task of a cooperating legal relations thus it emphasizes that the law should look behind the entity to discover the real state of affairs so bracket theory from the terminology it can be it, it can be concluded that for a time being people come together within a bracket they form a company they do their work and then get then the company get dissolved and the people leave uh, the the very big example is this the adventure the people that the adventure the people come together for it the uh, last theory is the purpose theory or theory of weck vermogen it states that only human beings can be a person a human beings can be quoted as person and have rights it also states that a juristic person is no person at all but merely a subjectless property meant for a particular purpose there is a uh, ownership but no owner thus a juristic person is not constructed by a group of people but based on some object and purpose only living things can be the subject matter of rights and duties so this theory narrowed down the concept and stated that only human beings are capable of being the legal entity and no other thing any other thing can be quoted as a ownership but not the owner this uh, leaving the humans everything which gains a corporate personality color shall have the ownership but no owner uh, it will not it will not have any human human so in the case of a company the company will have ownership of the assets but there will be no owner because in company there are numerous person but one single person cannot be quoted as a company
for revising what we have studied till now, I would say that legal personality is a very essential topic when it comes under when it comes to the jurisprudence under the Indian law. Why we uh, study uh, why we study legal personality is because under Indian law, if we see the Constitution of India, Indian Penal Code, CRPC, any other uh, act under the Government of India, we shall see that. All the rights, all the duties are given to the entity naming person. Article 21 states about the protection of life and liberty of a person. Article 14 gives equality to every person. Article 19, Article uh, 20, Article 22, all these articles give protection to the persons. Hence, uh, the, this lecture on the legal personality is given the equal importance. And then we will uh, come to the references. Number one, I have discussed. I have uh, discussed the book of uh, Dr. N. V. Pranjape, Studies in Jurisprudence and Legal Theory, 2014 uh, edition. Second, Dr. V. D. Mahajan, Jurisprudence and Legal Theory, fifth edition, Eastern Law, Law Company. I would like to say thanks for this uh, presentation.